one of the wonders of the jungle bring. <laughs> so we made it to the beach. After all that, here we are at last. Today we're finally starting our volunteer program for the Great Barrier Reef. In our first day, we made our way to the beautiful Fitzroy Island to visit and help out the local turtle rehabilitation center. So these guys, what we like to call them, these are the scoots. So the carapace is what we call that whole shell. Plastrum is the bottom. Each of these individual scales that we call them scoots. The Great Barrier Reef is home to six of the seven species of sea turtles in the world, with the only exception being the Kemp's Ridley sea turtle found in the Atlantic Ocean. But because of pollution, habitat destruction, and human activities, all of the sea turtle species are threatened with extinction, with their conservation status ranging from vulnerable to critically endangered. The Turtle Rehabilitation Center at Fitzroy Island is a volunteer-run facility dedicated to rescue and treat sick or injured sea turtles found around the region to hopefully reintroduce them into the wild. As the volunteers of the day, our job started with scrubbing their shells and preparing their lunch, which consists of freshly cut squid, fish, and lettuce. Oh, oh, Karen's wait, feeding wait, wait. the older turtle. Oh, oh. oh I got it. Apparently okay. this turtle's 80 years old, wow. Ooh, you see it, you see it. Oh. <laughs> a bunch of squid that I just cut. Yep. Besides feeding the turtles, we were also given the task of cleaning the tanks using brushes and water pumps. The turtles were very eager to help out, maybe a little too much. But... Away again, come on, come on, get away. Did you get in among the rocks in the middle? Yeah, I did, I did. Oh, you want to go first. Oh, yeah. Can I come back for it? Come back for it? Here you are. So, we're just finishing up at the turtle rehabilitation place. This is the big girl here. Yeah. Sharon's right. giving her the last rub. Remember, guys, no. don't touch a turtle in the wild. We're yes. only able to do this because we're in a controlled environment. And, and this we, helps get their algae off their shell, yeah, but so, they can do that in the wild. And we had proper training with the proper caretakers. Oh, but isn't she so beautiful? <laughs> <laughs> she's 80 years old, apparently. So she's been in the water before it started getting warmer. Yeah. Which is a bit sad. Yeah, I know you yeah. love it. I know. We're gonna go snorkeling pretty soon, and hopefully we can see some in the wild. Yeah. Finishing our volunteer work of the day, we made our way to the beach for some tropical island snorkeling. Using the red light filter on the GoPro, we submerged into the water. Although the water here is very shallow, the species found here are quite the opposite. We soon found ourselves surrounded by all kinds of tropical fish. As we made our way to the deeper parts of the reef, the composition of the environment changed, where different kind of marine life can be found. It is here we found our first wild sea turtle. Although it is wild, it seems unbothered by our presence and continued to minding its own business at the bottom. However, as a reptile, it does need to come up every once in a while for air. And of course, we seized this chance to swim alongside it. 
Remember, we were only allowed to touch the sea turtles in the rehabilitation center because it was in a controlled environment with expert supervision. When you see sea turtles in the wild, please do not touch, even when they approach you, as it can cause them stress or transmit diseases. Simply give them the respect and observe them from a safe distance. With late afternoon approaching, we made our way under the dock, where some of the larger fish were found. Eating the algae. That was great. Didn't see any sharks. Saw a ray, but the GoPro died unfortunately, so couldn't film it. So we're very tired and we can't wait for the ferry back. So it's been about half an hour. Yeah, yeah. so we're just enjoying these. Very delicious. I've got a cider, a pear cider. I got a mocktail. A good day off as well. Today is the day. We're finally boating out into open water and explore the iconic Great Barrier Reef. With the GoPro ready, we began our first dive, where we will try to record the biodiversity in the area. The Great Barrier Reef, the world's largest coral reef system stretching over 23,000 kilometers. It is so big that it is visible from space. Coral reefs are one of the most diverse ecosystems in the world, and it is certainly represented here, with over 9,000 species of fish, sea turtles, marine mammals, invertebrates, and plants. As we descend to the sea floor, some of the curious residents began to greet us, including the iconic clownfish and this giant sea cucumber. Without a very expensive underwater camera, the colors of the coral reefs are not as vibrant as what you see on a BBC documentary. With that being said, diving here, surrounded by countless marine life, is still absolutely mesmerizing. Making our way through the dense corals, with the waterproof notepad in hand, we wrote down the interesting things we saw. On the second dive of the day, we descended to a deeper part of the reef. Because some water drops got into my GoPro housing, there will be a water drop on the screen for all of the footage on this dive. To that, I sincerely apologize. But hey, like they said, experience is the best teacher. And in this dive, we found our first turtle on the Great Barrier Reef. They often come to these regions to seek food and shelter. And this one is currently resting on the reef top, enjoying the flow of currents. It is the second day of our diving trip. This time, we are assisting the local marine conservationist for coral plantation. The threat of rising ocean temperature and changes in water pH levels are constantly affecting the survival of coral reefs. To help with the situation, conservation teams will grow corals themselves in a coral farm such as this, and replant some of it back to the reef periodically. The corals in some of these farms are already well grown, so our leader breaks some of the branches to replant them in a place he deems fit. First, he brushes a rock surface clean, then hammer a few nails onto the rock. Then using wires to tie the coral branches onto the nails. Eventually, the wire and the nail will dissolve, leaving the coral growing on the rock, finishing the plantation. While we were busy helping out the team leader, some of the locals came to greet us, like this three-banded clownfish that is very unhappy with my GoPro. Our second dive of the day, and the last dive on this trip, was a fun dive where it's all about exploration. For this dive, we descended to the deepest we've ever been on this trip, immersing ourselves into the scenery.
Towards the end of the dive, I noticed something unique within the reefs. It is a moray eel, chasing off what seems to be a species of trout. After fending off the intruder, the eel slithered its snake-like body into the cave, leaving me and the trout outside. Leaving the moray eel behind, we came across another impressive resident in this region, the giant clam. You may not see it well due to the image distortion on the GoPro, but this clam is bigger than my entire body. It was an unforgettable experience diving in the Great Barrier Reef, but all things must come to an end. After taking one last look at this natural wonder, we ascended back onto the boat. So, you may be wondering, why did the episode just end here? And why did the three episode Genesis Journeys Ken Saga ended without a proper ending? Don't worry, I am here to explain why there was nothing after the dives and what happened after our trip. So first of all, if you haven't noticed, I am back in Auckland. And a lot has happened uh, from the end of the trip to uh, wh where we are now. Basically, after our two days dive at the Great Barrier Reef, we had one more day where we went to help a local facility at Cairns to sort out plastic wastes uh, found on the beach. It was quite cool, and it was certainly very insightful to hear just how much garbage are found around our beaches, and uh, the specific processes on what to do with them. But there was not that much opportunity to film, uh, and the whole process just won't be as interesting to present in the video. So which is why I have decided to not include that part. And right after that day, uh, here's the fun part, I noticed there was a tiny cut on my finger. I think it was when I scratched myself, uh, grabbing onto the mooring rope uh, of the boat when we were diving. Didn't think of it much first, but as it went on, it just got worse and worse. And when we went on our flight uh, back to New Zealand, my finger just inflated like a balloon, to a point where it grew twice the size of my other index finger. That was the point where I was like, something ain't right here. So I went to the hospital as quickly as I could, and they found that it was absolutely infected. This might be a little bit gross, so if you're a little bit squeamish or not just not comfortable with these things, skip to this part of the video. But because the infection was already quite deep when they found it, uh, there was no other option other than to cut my finger open, stick a giant metal rod into the cut, and try to squeeze as many of the infected dirty things as possible. <laughs> so... <laughs> Uh, that was not fun, and that was certainly not okay to put on camera. That was one of the worst days of my life, but thankfully, the finger is fully healed now, and it is very lucky because it could have been so much worse. So what does this story teach us? Please, always wear gloves when you are diving, and if, even if you have the smallest cut, do not ignore it. If you feel like something's wrong after diving, please go see a doctor, because when it comes to marine infections, you can never be too careful. But besides that, um, I enjoyed this trip quite a lot. And we certainly did a lot of things. As a wildlife videographer and just a general animal lover, uh, it was certainly a great experience to go to these places that you normally see on in documentaries and experience what it's actually like in real life. And as a scuba diver for a few years, the Great Barrier Reef is certainly one of the best diving spots in the world. The only downside, I guess, is that they only offer group diving instead of um, diving with your buddy by yourselves. Uh, because that is how they operate in New Zealand. But I guess because how sensitive the coral reefs are, it is understandable that they do not give you the option. But this has been a great trip, and we have certainly made a lot of great memories. Some of my favorite moments include the kookaburra, absolutely smacking the stick insect at Harley's, the shot, which that Boyd Forest Dragon catch the cicada mid-air, and of course early in the video where I saw the Moray eel chasing off a trout. I think that's a trout? Because I, th I thought it was a either cod or a grouper at first, but 
they don't seem quite right. I'm, I'm still learning about the Australian fish identification. But yeah, this has been overall a very great experience. And I talked with Sharon and we are both very excited to go back. With that being said, this is the end of the Cannes Saga. If you enjoyed this video, please check some of the previous episodes of Chinese's Journeys. If you want more videos like this, please feel free to subscribe because I have a few more ideas that I want to try in future videos. Oh, by the way, um, excuse this uh, setup. This is still a work in progress. The, I, I was planning on the whole shelf to be filled with very cool things, but obviously we're always very busy at the moment, so I haven't had time to properly sort it out yet. As the video goes on, you will see this background becoming better and better. But with all that being said, thank you for watching this three-episode Ken's journey, and I hope to see you in the next video. Genesis.